Welcome to The Composter, a podcast for farmers and composters. I'm your host and fellow composter, Jane Murner. Join me in practical conversation between industry professionals and farmers with a passion for producing high-quality compost. We're going to dig deep into the science, technology, and art of compost production so that we as composters can help enliven the world's soils. Today's episode of The Composter is brought to you by ComTech. Today, more than ever, people are discovering the benefits of compost in gardens, landscapes, and agriculture. However, as composting awareness grows, so does consumer demand. As a result, commercial composters are seeking ways to increase year-round production while maintaining high levels of quality in their compost. For many, the solution is a better process. For over 25 years, ComTech has worked with scientists, agriculture experts, and customers to develop a proven four-step process that produces healthy, contaminant-free compost while optimizing commercial production efficiency. This process is known as shred, turn, screen, and separate. You can learn more about the ComTech process at comtechamericas.com backslash composter podcast. While you're there, request a complimentary consultation to discover if the ComTech process is right for your commercial operation. On our farm, EarthCare Farm, screening used to be the bottleneck in our process. We now have a ComTech M2 multi-star screener and it has made our composting process much more efficient. ComTech Americas is proud to support the Composter podcast and is ready to help you make the most of a great opportunity. Since 1993, Vermont Compost Company has grown from a small local operation to a company supplying premium living soils to thousands of successful growers all over the country, combining meticulously crafted compost with intentional sourcing of the highest quality materials and amendments. Vermont Compost Company consistently delivers organic growers with the soil their businesses depend on. In addition to product consistency, growers can count on Vermont Compost to provide the technical expertise it takes to make your organic farm flourish. Visit vermontcompost.com. Why grow alone? And now, back to the show. Today's guest is Michael Martinez, founder of LA Compost. Michael Martinez has chosen compost as his way to show his care for humanity and build a healthy community, and it's been incredibly impactful. LA Compost now has a diverse network of 41 community composting locations across LA County. I heard Michael speak at the U.S. Compost Conference last winter. If you ever get a chance to hear him, listen up. Michael often brings people to happy tears when he speaks from the heart about his love of compost. I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. Michael Martinez, welcome to The Composter. I'm tickled to have you on. Finally get to talk to you in person after listening to your interviews in the past and uh, and seeing you live at the U.S. Compost Conference this past winter was a treat. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here and hold some space and, and kind of just engage in a conversation. Sounds wonderful. I'm going to just kick it right off and say that Season one, I really focused on large-scale compost sites and really high-quality large-scale compost sites. And now I'm just excited to hear more about community composting. So just give us a little scope scope about LA Compost and what you do. Yeah, so LA Compost started 10 years ago as a, essentially a bike-powered collection um, movement of picking up food scraps, composting in our friends and family backyards and giving that compost away for free. And the donations we received, we built school gardens. And we very much have expanded and transformed those early early days into this robust network, a robust decentralized network of composting spaces across the most populous county in the country. For us, community compost is investing and engaging in both of those two words equally, both the community and the compost that we create. Hmm. Our tagline at LA Compost is soil and people. And we very much view this work as work of the soil as much as it is work of the souls that engage with it. So it's very much has a people component and engaging and investing in the communities that surround each space and also a soil component in regards to soil health and how compost supports soil health and how that inevitably is connected to our own community health as well. So 
We at LA Compost, we work to restore lost connections to the soil and one another, and we use compost as, as our means and our bridge to get there. Um, yeah, there's so many parallels and metaphors and similarities in regards to the compost piles, as well as the communities that engage with it. And one of the things that I'm just fascinated and um, hopeful for is establishing strong partnerships, establishing robust networks. We often talk about the mycorrhizal fungi network below the ground and how we want to embody that above the ground via a robust human network, a human network that shares with one another, that can communicate well with one another, that can resolve conflict when it arises, that can um, see the, themselves as, as part of the whole and think beyond themselves. And we're really just inspired by the ways in which folks show up in our spaces and each individual story and how it relates to one or another and how this collective imperfection essentially is creating this really beautiful tapestry of, of work and stories and goodness that is taking place all around our city. <laughs> it's, you're just reminding me, it's like a mirror of the soil. Like what you're creating above ground is just looking back down at the soil, the same mirror. It's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and um, you've kind of already answered this, but if you want to add anything about what is your motivation and just what drives you? <laughs> yeah, I think I am motivated by what could be and what ought to be and what should be in our city. I think um, I'm so motivated by um, every space in Los Angeles, but especially those that are a bit more green than others is always beautiful to see the life transfers that are occurring in regards to squirrels just bustling through an oak tree or a hummingbird um, near some flowers or just just birds galore in our in our parks across our city but i'm motivated by just how the sounds of los angeles and the life transfers of los angeles are beautiful everywhere you look from um, the urban hardscapes of our city to the natural spaces of our city i think la is a complex city with some complex issues, but it allows for some complex and nuanced solutions to be created as well. And I am really honored to even play just a small role within this work. And I'm very motivated by my team um, and their stories and the way in which they show up and do this work. I'm very motivated by our community leaders and volunteers who show up on a consistent basis to, to continue to contribute to this work. And I'm motivated by the human network that we've had an honor to really um, hold space for, but also just to be a, a small part of as well, because I often say that the beauty of a compost pile comes from the collective imperfections and diversity of its ingredients. And for me personally, the beauty of LA is very much reflective of the people who call it home and the neighborhood um, and, and the zip codes across our city. The, the beauty of our city is the people who live here. And I'm motivated by the people because um, it's their stories, it's their efforts, it's their work that are keeping this moving along, but also um, bringing some beautiful inspiration and creativity and curiosity into this work along the way. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's a great motivation. <laughs> beautiful. Um, if you had a blank check to spend on LA Compost, where would you spend it? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I oftentimes say that a budget is a reflection of your values. And where we spend majority of our funds as an organization is on our people and on our staff. And I would continue that trend if I had a blank check and support our staff with well, uh, with better wages than what they have now, better um, care packages, better employee benefits, but also just extending that to the community, community stipends, internships, um, paid learning opportunities. I, I very much would support the team. I would love to see an expansion at our park locations. I've, I'm really thrilled and excited about reimagining how we compost in parks here in California and Los Angeles specifically, reimagining what recreation looks like at our parks. How are we distributing resources and how our life transfers are occurring at our parks from tree giveaways, native plant giveaways, mulch soil and compost giveaways, and how that becomes normalized and celebrated and appreciated. And I very much am excited about some of the educational youth programming that we're putting together as a former elementary school teacher, I, I firmly believe that education is only as strong as the opportunity and access that you give someone to put what was learned into practice. And I think for us, we are developing some field trip opportunities, a traveling magic soil bus, so to speak, that engages youth on the wonderful world of soil and the magic of compost and inspiring them on what is possible and what can be, but also allowing for them to go to the spaces in their neighborhood where they can see it in action as well. So 
I feel like a blank check would go to people, would go to programs, would go to a lot of partners as well. And just like the Soil Fungi Mycorrhizal Network, how are we a conduit of those resources to share um, those resources with others alongside us as well? That's really wonderful. It's um, sparking a memory from this last couple of weeks where I had a field trip here of third graders. And at the end of the tour, I hold up my handful of compost and say how there's more life in this handful of compost and there are humans on the planet. And then one little boy, Lucian, who I hope hears this someday, um, he said, I want to see those. I want to see the, all, the, all the little soil animals. And so this past week, I got to go into his classroom with my microscope and the big monitor. And at the end, he said, you just blew my tiny little mind. <laughs> and I just, it, it made me, I, I'm, I'm now motivated. I, I want this for so many more children. And I, I love your magic school bus, your magic soil school bus, because yeah. it's, it's, we need, we need the kids to be connected to this and know that they're, they're not alone. They're just covered with microbes and it's so magical and amazing. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's a wonderful book called the fungus, fungus is among us. That is a great kids book. And I love, I love that story. Thank you for sharing. We do this for adults at LA Compass and we have micro, uh, some microscope sessions and soil sessions with folks to look at their stuff under the microscope. But to show it to kids, we're all about core memories and positive core memories that translate to adult-based actions and lifelong actions. So um, yeah, we're encouraged by it, inspired by others doing it and really looking forward to establishing that here in our city. That's so great. Did I hear when that you are writing a children's story or maybe finished one? I am. I'm in the process of wrapping that up. And yeah, I can't share that many details, but it's very much a, a composting community kind of book focused on um, yeah, composting across the community, encouraging kids to participate and, and what it means from like a macro and micro perspective of how this work translates to our 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 own shared relationships and cultivated friendships um, on the surface of the soil. So I'm so excited about yeah. that. You got to let me know when it comes out so I can promote it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be happy to. <laughs> All right. Next question is, how do you know when you've had a good year? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's the typical like quantitative and qualitative analysis of like, all right, we had an impact in regards to Diversion of materials from landfills, participation in workshops, volunteer hours. Um, we obviously have a few soil studies that are taking place at various green spaces. But I think for me personally, I, I look at our team. I look at um, the kind of culture that we are continuing to establish. I look at the increase in partnerships that we've established across the city, county, and country. I look at... Um, I want to. I, I continue to look at more than just the, the typical metrics that we would include in an annual report because we could triple our metrics yet are struggling personally, or our culture is is fading, or we didn't increase partners, or we didn't support those within our network or on the sidelines. So, I think a good year is both an increase in metrics or maintaining what we've done, but also increasing partnerships, um, highlighting other people's work having staff kind of celebrate one another, um, but also just seeing community members sh like continue to show back up and establish a level of consistency is to me uh, a sign of a good year because we've created a beautiful user experience for someone to want to return, to want to continue to engage. And the more I see those familiar faces, I, I consider it a good year in the sense that our team, our staff, our spaces have cultivated a, an inclusive and inviting area for folks to feel welcomed and to participate as their full self and to um, be a part of something that's bigger than themselves. So a good year, of course, is funds raised and metrics diverted. But I think from the qualitative standpoint, it's the, the human elements of new relationships cultivated, new partnerships formed, and uh, being a conduit of resources to share with those alongside us. Hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. High Country News is an independent, nonprofit publication that has been covering the Western United States for more than 50 years. HCN provides unique on the ground reporting on the land, water, wildlife, and communities of the region with dedicated coverage of climate, environmental, and indigenous issues. Sign up for free newsletters or a trial of the magazine at hcn.org/slash no till. 
Xsense is an innovative company that provides home safety products, including cutting edge smoke detectors, carbon monoxide alarms, and other smart home security systems designed to keep you and your loved ones safe 24 7. I'm excited to check out their humidity monitors, which will be helpful for monitoring the humidity while drying our farm's garlic. With easy to install devices and smart technology, you'll have peace of mind knowing that Xsense is always on guard. You can purchase Xsense products from xsense.com or simply search Xsense on Amazon. And now, back to the show. Um, who's your composting hero? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't have one. I have a lot of heroes and shiros in my life. I feel like the early early days, I feel like Will Allen from Growing Power, Passion Marie from Detroit Dirt, um, Brenda Platt from ILSR, just like some some strong foundational staples across the country that have really put a lot of this movement on their shoulders. But from a more like micro perspective and close to home, I would actually like say it's my dad and grandfather. And I, I say that in that they weren't the biggest composters, but they were the biggest repairs, restorers, and reimagine. Like they had the biggest, they, they had the biggest imagination. My grandfather was a carpenter, and my father is an upholster. So you can only imagine the things that my grandfather built with foods, like with with wood scraps. He built a tree house. He like he was a magician with what some people considered waste. And my father is an upholster still to this day. He would take my brother and I to pick up furniture and what was considered trash to someone could be reupholstered by my father into the centerpiece of someone's living room. So even though they weren't directly composting with food scraps and mulch and sawdust and stable bedding and doing all that, they were composters in their own right, in their own, prof- in their own profession and introduced myself to this act of repair, this act of restoration and re. um, reimagining what could be at an early age. So I would, I would, I would say both of them are, are, are the closest heroes for my journey. <laughs> they, it sounds like they really taught you to value and respect resources too, um, which is a Absolutely. beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, amazing. And so I, this is the question I'm most excited about talking to you about is what is your vision for the future of composting and how do we get there? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think composting is something that we want to remove from this backyard in the shadows activity and put it front and center side everywhere to really celebrate it for what it is. Um, I really look forward to continuing to establish the opportunity for people to choose how they engage with soil, how they engage with compost, and how they engage with food. And I think for me, the future of compost is as robust and complex and nuanced as like a soil food web. There is choice, there is options, there is a variety of locations to engage with. And I think perhaps just thinking small, the future of compost in LA includes composting at schools and libraries and so many backyards as well as so many community gardens it includes farmers market drop-offs where folks can bring their material to the farmers markets it includes so many people doing it in places of workshops worship and where they naturally do life but also in parks and urban farms as well as having a municipal level so the future of compost for me is having multiple tiers and opportunities for it to occur versus a single isolated solution there are areas where that perhaps is the only place where it can happen and perhaps just picking it up from a big truck is the only option. But for me, I want the future to include choice and I want the future to include a variety of access points. I want the future to be inclusive of not just for single family homeowners or those in a duplex or triplex, but composting options and solutions for everyone. I think the future of compost ensures that this compost is going to the soils that need it and ensuring that it can be returned to the farmers that are growing a lot of the food that's imported. It's going to the urban green spaces that need it, but it's also creating jobs and creating a little bit of value and understanding of its worth in the future as well. Um, I think for me in regards to how we get there, we need to kind of one hold space for one another to share ideas, understand that 
uh, different ideas are inevitable and conflict is inevitable as we are complex human beings. I think it's important for us to identify the lanes in which we are going to operate as well as the puzzle piece in which we kind of created to contribute. I think it's just looking at all options on the table and seeing how we can kind of work in this unique kind of balanced way. I think at least for us in LA, we have really worked on defining our lane at this community and individual scale and kind of know our limits and capacity, but we really want to lean into what we're doing. So for me, my vision for the future of composting is normalizing it, having people celebrate, be very active it, but also having the active compost translate to our own lives in terms of we are reimagining how things can be. We are allowing ourselves to contribute to something that is bigger than ourselves and just like compost it gives itself a way to allow for something else to grow and thrive i very much want our communities to see ourselves as that but also receive that when in, when they are in need so the future and vision of compost includes people includes communities who are often impacted by industries at the scale at a large scale and it's looking at the smallest of microbes to the large communities to the large decision makers and those in positions of power and figuring out how they can all work in a non-extractive but life-giving way. Mm. I, it, that's so beautiful. And I, I, I'm holding that vision for us all. Um, and do you, are you picturing all scales of composting? Like I, I, I know like for homeowners, like in home and apartments and those things, but are you also picturing larger scale operations and, medium scale and community scale or are you envisioning like like I just want to clarify I just want to make it so clear I feel like we can make visions happen when they're really clear right <laughs> absolutely so the Institute for local self-reliance put out a really beautiful map which kind of is like an upside down pyramid that kind of talks about the hierarchy to reduce food waste and build community and they kind of talk about how composting is wonderful but it's even higher use of food is getting it to those who are food insecure and ensuring that we are kind of reducing uh, what we are creating to begin with. I think I see all scales functioning, but I see uh, community scales taking up a larger space than what they are now. I think at least specifically for LA Compost, we are very much focused on home composting as kind of like the highest use in the sense that it's not leaving your property. You're working with family, friends, and those you live with to build your soil on your very own property. The next tier that I very much see increasing is this small-scale decentralized tier at these community locations, these co-op locations, um, where it's just normal to know that every garden in LA is going to have a compost operation. Every library or church or school also is composting. Every farmer's market has a drop-off. And then I think our, our maximum medium scale is just like the urban parks and reg regional parks where there's thousands and thousands of acres of parkland in our city. And I personally am excited to legitimize this tier as something that's recognized by the state as something that can very much be replicated and um, duplicated across the state and country, but also just ensuring that a percentage of all the organics that we generate or consume um, stays within our city limits. I think it's not impossible to, to, to keep a, a large chunk, but I think it's important that we see food scraps not as waste or trash, but as a resource that we can reinvest in our neighborhoods and our zip codes and keep those local. So my vision sees all scales functioning because of perhaps necessity of a city or county of 10 million people. But my vision also has some intention towards the community-based efforts and the individualized efforts of how we take up more space than we are because the space we are taking up now is minuscule to non-existent. And I think in order for this to be robust, complex, diverse, equitable, and inclusive, people need to be part of the solution. Um, and I just want to see more of it. I'd, I'd love to like expand that, the vision you have for parks of you know having maybe slightly bigger sites there on like the public park space because when I was at the U.S. Compost Conference there was really two tracks there was these small community composters and then there was these really really large sites and you had to choose like which one you were going to go attend and I have mine's in the middle 
I'm like a community composter, but we're pretty large scale, but we're on a beautiful farm that's like worthy of tours. And um, it, it didn't quite fit either one of those those visions, which I, I think I think I could see what we're doing here on these parks you're talking about, where it's like efficient and beautiful and there's care and, you know, that, and but also can ha- process a real lot of material, <laughs> maybe with some equipment, you yeah. know, some bigger equipment. I, I'm loving the like, let's bring it all. Let's like say yes to, yes, yes to this. Yeah. <laughs> and re-envision so what, what a large scale could look like. It can be, it doesn't have to be so industrial. So <laughs> Yeah, and, and I, I fully agree with that. I, I call it this medium scale of composting in the sense that it's that hybridized version of what community and what industrial or commercial could look like in a public green space like a park. So yeah, a park with with operating windrows and trommel turnovers and sifters, but also like everything can also be done by hand at the at the at, if absolutely needed. And you wanted a, a a group of 50 fifth graders helping out. You know, it's it's not like entirely exclusive for hard hats and highlighted vests best to be walking around but it's very much engaging in the community for sure so i think for me the park model is still something that we're learning by doing we're trying to see what fits what works a lot of parks in la are utilizing purple pipe reclaimed water so there's that benefit of kind of the water element of it there's we're working with parks department to utilize some of the compost on park lands to support in sloped or eroded areas we are um doing some studies on regards to like water capture and carbon capture and organic matter increase in certain control plots. But I think for us as well, at least speaking of like Griffith Park, there's already such beautiful programs taking place at the park in regards to native plant giveaways and fruit tree giveaways that a lot of what we're doing can be coupled with some of what they're doing in regards to mulch giveaways and compost giveaways and, um, and different like volunteer opportunities as well. I just, I, I love a park that has so many different choices and points of engagement for someone to see what fits or works for them. Um, it's not just a typical playground restroom and a water fountain, but there's, you know, a community garden or a public orchard or a nursery. And with Griffith, you have it all. You have the tennis courts, the the museums, the golf courses, you have the carousels and all that. But Every park is different and every park is unique in regards to its square footage and how much space it takes. But I think one of the things that we can see as a common denominator is just like beautiful spaces that are teeming with life. And when something is beautiful and when something is teeming with life, there is this moment of reflection, of perspective and appreciation for your place in that, um, your, your place in that space as well. And I think we want more moments of pause for folks. Um, across our city, we want more moments of reflections, of gratitude, appreciation, of acknowledgement, and um, I think parks can allow for that because they are like even when we compost on the weekends, the park is packed with birthday parties and uh, quinceañeras and just gatherings and hikes, and it shouldn't just happen on a Sunday or a Saturday. The the park should always be teeming with life, whether it's humans or the worms and the bees and the birds and and everything in between. I think we just want to create more beautiful spaces, both in and around parks. And I think composting can play a huge part in that. Um, I'm a hundred percent on board with you. I I love all that. (laughs) Let's do it. Let's make it happen. (laughs) Um, Is there anything else you want us to know? You want to, you want to, you want want to share? (laughs) No, I, I, I just, I'm encouraged by, everyone's participation within their own compost journey. I feel like composting is a spectrum of those that just listen and learn about it to those that are fully invested in doing it daily. So just want to extend an encouragement for individuals that perhaps are listening or are on the fence about trying to start. The learning is in the doing and composting is very forgiving. So just want to provide that added element of encouragement for you to try. Any resources for those that want to try that you recommend? Yeah, we have our website, lacompost.org, with quite a few resources and videos in English and Spanish and composting guides and um, plans on how to build things. We have resource toolkits and coaching opportunities. So you can start with us, but um, the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, IOSR, is also an incredible wealth of uh, resources as well. Mm. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for being on. I appreciate having you so much. It was an amazing conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for the invite and holding space for us today. Wasn't that beautiful? Don't you want to make more compost? I do. For more information on LA Compost and what Michael Martinez is up to, check out lacompost.org. I want to give a huge thank you to Jesse, Jackson, and Michael from the No-Till Growers. Without them, this show would not have happened. And I hope you will listen to the great music of Soul Shot from the intro. Check them out at soulshot.net. Deep gratitude to all the compost lovers listening out there. 